Thank you very much um, for giving me the opportunity to speak to you all today. Um, my name is Anna Timbrell, I'm from Darwin Healthcare Communications and I'm one of the account directors there. Um, so I've been asked to give you a presentation about what medical communications means to Darwin Healthcare, why you might like a career in medical communications, before talking a little bit more about our client service team, our scientific services team and what we look for in both of those teams and what we think that makes Darwin different and a, and a great place to work. So from Darwin's perspective, what do we think medical communications is? Well, we believe it to be the communication of medical and scientific information to healthcare professionals, either about a specific disease or a, a, a particular therapeutic area or specifically a drug. And generally it's on behalf of a pharmaceutical company. So there are opportunities for medical communication throughout the life cycle of any drug. As I think everybody is probably aware, the drugs that we see in front of us take a long time to come through from all the testing phases through to marketing and then um, life cycle management beyond that. And medical communications can have an input throughout that life cycle, be it medical support, integrated solutions, managing issues around products, internal communications or patent management. So there's lots of different places throughout the life cycle where medical communications can get involved. From Darwin's perspective, we tend to focus our efforts more on the publication planning side of things, key opinion leader engagement and um, um, management, scientific events such as um, satellite symposia, um, training both internally and externally, um, internal communications and, and also competitor monitoring. So there's lots of different parts throughout the life cycle that Darwin Healthcare gets involved in. So essentially it's taking raw data from publications or other sources and turning them into specific tactics that are going to be used out with healthcare professionals, either publications, presentations to an audience, training materials such as slide resources. Medical education obviously is quite a broad umbrella term um, and there are lots of different things that can be considered part of medical education. Um, this is a snapshot of the sorts of tactics that might be considered uh, medical education, ranging through from publications and the steering committees that go, go into organising those, communication strategies, internal training pieces, making sure that our pharmaceutical clients have got teams that are capable of speaking to healthcare professionals about their products and the disease areas of interest, through to more promotional sides of things such as satellite symposia, sales materials that the sales forces will be using. We obviously work in a very complex environment, um, both from a scientific standpoint, but also keeping up to date with the legal complexities, ensuring that we are complying with regulations, making sure that we can work at the speeds that our clients require us to. They're working in a competitive environment, so we need to make sure that we support them to get their voices heard within this crowded environment, and also ensuring that their key opinion leaders um, relationships are managed effectively by us as well, so sensitivity from that perspective. So what's good about a career in medical communications and why might you like to have a, a career in medical communications? Well, um, it's a really great opportunity to get a broad range of experience, both from working with some key experts in their field, um, an opportunity obviously to work within a broad range of therapeutic areas and across a different range of um, products. Um, there's also the possibilities once you're into medical communications that you can change, you can become a specialist in a different type of medical communications, you can move into more digitally focused activities, you could perhaps move into the event side of things or move from the scientific services into the account management side. So there's lots of opportunities once you're in the industry to have movement. So it's a very fast paced and challenging environment but with great experience to be gained within it and the opportunities to travel as well. Just as an example, thinking and focusing on Darwin particularly and perhaps what a 12-month um, event um, cycle might look for, like for us, we do more than 40 advisory boards each year um, and more than 10 symposia and standalone events. And as in doing so, we work with a number of different speaking faculty and obviously creating presentations for them and supporting them with their presentations to deliver at such events over a 12-month period. We also offer significant training opportunities, um, both from a formalised perspective. We obviously bring in people who are experts in their fields to train around um, 
uh, things like the compliance environment, ABPI and FPA, um, presentation training, we bring people in to talk about presentation training and ensure that we can all deliver um, presentations, negotiation skills and um, also making sure people are compliant with um, publication work as well. There's also more day-to-day -day mentoring that we operate with within Darwin um, ongoing basis throughout project life cycles, bringing newer members in the team up to speed with how we do things. And then in between the more structured and the more day-to-day um, -day training we offer, we also offer internal training, making sure that we're making best use of the resources and the um, experience and expertise that our internal team have to do lunch and learn meetings, sharing best practices through surgeries and, and that type of thing, so that we can really offer tailored training opportunities for our colleagues in line with their personal objectives and make sure that we're meeting those as well. So I'm going to just turn to talk a bit about the client service team and then followed by the scientific services team so that I can give you a bit of a flavour for what we do and what we like to see in people who are going to join our teams. So from my own personal perspective, my route into communications was through a broad-based biology degree. I then worked in the lab, I did some bench-based research and wondered what I was going to do after that. And I just happened upon the uh, medical communications industry when I was rooting around in the career service. And I think this is probably quite a common way that people find out about the industry. So I got a job initially as a, an associate medical writer and editor before then changing my role, as I've highlighted it can be done, into the more account management side, liaising with clients and um, coordinating projects. So what does my typical day look like? Well, put very simply, there isn't one. Um, so there are a number of things that I can get involved in on a daily basis, ranging from creating bu uh, budgets for new projects that we're going to be beginning or creating uh, pitch decks for um, prospective clients and working with the team to develop those and brainstorm around the ideas that we might want to present to our clients. I might be liaising with our creative team or our scientific services team to hold kickoff meetings and ensure that everybody is fully briefed on any particular project we're working on. I might be um, on a status call with clients, I might be keeping them up to speed with the um, status of the projects that we're working on for them, or I might be attending strategic planning meetings with clients, which is something that com commonly happens at this time of year uh, when they're thinking about 2017 and the next things that they might want to get involved in. So there isn't really a typical day, but it, this gives you a better flavour of the sorts of activities that you can get involved in. So what do we look for in a member of our client service team at Darwin? Well, a lot of it comes down to attitude. We really like to have people on the team who've got a real can-do attitude, who really like to accept a challenge and can work around that to, with problem solving and can bring their experience to support the team in that way. We like people to have an interest in science and many of us have a background in science as I do, but not all of us do, so it's by, certain, by no means mandatory. We like to have people on the team who can stay calm under pressure it's a fast-paced environment, so it's great that people can accommodate um, quick turnarounds on projects without getting stressed out. We look for people who really enjoy liaising with clients and are helping to um, communicate with them about projects, develop projects with them, so they need also to have good communication skills. Obviously, as my previous slide showed, I do a lot of budget work and things like that, so being comfortable with numbers is also very important. And ultimately what we need to do is to have a flexible approach. It's not a nine to five job. Um, and so we need to make sure that we're able to travel and can sometimes put in work above and beyond what, what you might otherwise expect. The ability to deliver what our clients want, when they want them, and within budgets, of course, is the key. So scientific services. Um, what does our scientific services team get involved in? And similarly to the client service team, there isn't a typical day in scientific services either. Some of the things that our scientific services team might get involved in might be, they might be participating in advisory boards, London, the US, or somewhere in Europe. Um, they might be participating in that so they can write a report, perhaps a consensus document afterwards for our clients. They might also be participating in brainstorming ideas, developing pro programs of work for prospective clients, and working with the client service team towards the budgets for those. They might be reviewing content created by some of the other medical writers and team to make sure that it, it's um, um, scientifically rigorous and make sure that we've conveyed the objectives of the clients within that as well. So there's lots of different types of activities that our scientific services team also get involved in on a daily basis. 
And what do we look for in a member of our scientific services team? We need people who've got a science background, and while a PhD is an advantage, it's by no means um, mandatory. We like people to really enjoy writing and have a demonstrable talent for it as well. Our team need to be able to digest new information rapidly with good desktop research skills. Obviously, we sometimes have to pick up new projects very quickly or get up to speed for new pitch work that we're working with clients. In the same way as we like our team to have a great attitude for the client service team, we also need that from our scientific services team too. So a great can-do attitude, a, the, the kind of willingness to turn their hand to any type of new project they might be faced with, and to obviously enjoy um, working as part of that team as well. They need to have good attention to detail and presentation skills as well, in the same way that the client service team do too and the ability to take feedback without taking it too personally is obviously very key when people are reviewing your content. And again, the ability to deliver what the client wants, when, it, when they want it, and also within the budget that is set for it. So what do we think makes Darwin different and then a great place to work? Well, we operate um, as a truly joined up team. We are part of Grey Health Group which in turn is part of the WPP network of agencies. And we've got extensive access to resources internationally and, and more locally as well. And just to bring that to life a little bit for you, in our London office, our Darwin Healthcare colleagues sit next to our Grey Healthcare London team, who are our advertising sister company, who sit next to our WG Access uh, sister company, who look after all the market access activities that we get involved in, who sit next to GCI, who has our PR agency. So that really shows you that we've got not only access to people on their end of the phone, but also by walking to the next desk. So when we pitch to our prospective clients, we are able to actually handpick a team of people who really will give them the best for their project, for the, the need that they have from that resource of people. And we frequently work with both our US colleagues to share resources and also those in um, France and Germany and beyond to support them at times when they, when they need extra resource and we have capacity to help them with that. We also operate a really inclusive and nurturing environment at Darwin. We all collaborate openly, everybody's ideas are valued and is, everybody's encouraged to support the team directly and also the wider team that they might normally work with. Um, everybody's encouraged to offer input both into projects but also on a company basis if they've got some interesting ideas. No ideas are silly and we always ask people to bring those to us. We also have a training academy um, that obviously I've mentioned before that really helps our team to fine-tune any existing skills they have, but also upskill them as well so that they can develop new ones and to then encourage people to share that amongst the team. So we really think that having a thoroughly joined up team and in, uh, the environment that we create as setting Darwin aside from other agencies and a great place to work. So thank you very much for your attention. Um, we're always interested to receive CVs from interesting um, candidates, so please do visit our website and, and get in touch.